Hey buddy, so Chrome job. Today, if you are a C Sharp .NET programmer, then we both are going to design our first Chrome job today without paying a single amount of money to any third party libraries. So you know what, before we dig into the implementation part, let's try to understand what Chrome job is, why we need to use it. So Chrome job is a one way to implement the background job is one way to implement the scheduler right okay to implement the background job to implement the scheduler part there are different approaches one you can create a console application write down your business logic there then use task scheduler to automate that to schedule it second you can create azure functions use azure function to schedule something third you can go for cron job Fourth, you can go for third party libraries to implement the Chrome job. Now, these are the different approaches. I'm sure there are many more, but you know, to implement the Chrome job, there's already third party libraries. But today, since we don't want to spend any money, right? We don't want to pay extra. So we will use the core feature of c .net and implement our first Chrome job, right? So let's look into now the coding part okay so here we are in the visual studio and this is the first cron job that we already have now how it works so you know it keeps working on every weekday at particular time and it completes its job now there are you know different methods to make some memory cleanup so what we will do let's go ahead create our own class and then see you know how to implement in detail and every single detail let's talk about every little things that we have in this class right okay so what we will do let's go ahead and create our another Chrome job so what I will do here so I will add a new class let's say a new class and let's name it uh, let's name it second Chrome job I would call it service okay so second Chrome job service, you can create your own class for what purpose you are using. If you're using for, you know, import, you can call it, you know, ABCD import job or import Chrome job as per your project naming convention. Since I already have a first Chrome job, so I'm going to create a second Chrome job service, right? Uh, let's add that right now. What, what is the first thing that I need to implement the Chrome job? Now, do not confuse this cron job with the expression that we are using right that star 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 so this is the core cron job that we're going to use without using any third party library so if you need that star star thing then there are third party library so in the next session i will talk about that as well but today let's design our first free cron job without paying anything extra using the core feature of dotnet c sharp so we need first thing that is you know i hosted service so i will inherit it with i hosted service here you go now this is the first step to implement the interface when i implement it is giving me two methods one start second stop right now since what i need to run it second thing that i need i need a timer so let's create a timer object now uh, let's create a timer object here i will say uh, i need a private because i don't want to give access to any other class so i want to make it private and i will call it a timer class yes underscore timer right and i will make it nullable here so don't keep giving me a warning okay now i need to uh, start the timer right or initialize the object actually so i will say okay uh timer dot no not not timer dot i need to initialize it so i have to say timer dot new timer and now here it needs some of the parameters so it is asking for callback function that means i don't have any callback that means i need to create a callback okay so what i will do here uh i will create another method here and i will call it a private a void and then i will say do work so because that is the standard practice to you know implement uh, this class when you are going for a cron job when you are implementing the i hosted service you can name it anything there is no constraint on that but the principle to implement i hosted service says 
that you know create your method name with do work so that give a message that you know they just start they just stop and you are going to do your all work inside this method right okay now what it will do so for now let's say you know uh console dot right line and i wanted to print something that will say uh do work come on i will say do work started right and let's make it full stop or doesn't matter so let's say semicolon so this is the only log and what so now it was requiring my callback so i will pass it as a callback as a delegate and here you go what else okay there is a state i don't need to worry about state at this stage when we are when we are going to create a cron job so i will pass it a null and then what is next there is a due time and there is a period okay interesting thing so when you are working with timer you might be already aware about you know there is a due time and there is a period if not we can talk now okay so it is asking for two more parameter due time and period right so let's declare here so i will say a uh, where come on where this is due time right and call it a uh, time span dot from let's say a uh, seconds right and i will call it um 5 second okay and then let's create one more and let's call it a period right so this is my period and i will call it um let's call it let's call it 5 and let's make it 0 why 0 okay so it is asking for due time and period so due time means what would be the first time when you want this timer to work right so whenever you execute this program this will wait for that time since i'm saying zero then do not wait run straight away do not hold for any milliseconds just go and run right so that is the due time there is no due time that means i'm not giving to give you any due time to this timer now second is period time so period time is the intervals after how many seconds how many minutes you wanted to run this timer again and again right so that is the period time so i will mark period time here that means you know after every 5 seconds so first thing due time is zero whenever this start this my job start run this timer then wait for next 5 second and keep repeating this so after every 5 second keep executing this timer business logic right now let's semicolon ah let's close this and say semicolon but look like this timer is not happy right why it is not happy if i look at the timer implementation i see it is going for callback okay uh <clears throat> uh this one actually right so these are the one that we are passing these four things okay so i see uh if i go inside actually this one then i will say, oh so this callback is required state right i don't worry about state but i need to pass a state to make it happy right so i will call it um it was object right so i will call it state for this video to understand the concept of you know a uh, cron job that we going to implement we don't need to worry about the state but it will be used in the next session when we'll go for similar concept something on top of cron job right so okay now let's see if it is happy yes it is happy you see okay now i don't want to throw it come on i want to say since this is a task i will say okay return what task dot complete a task okay so visual studio is already very smart is giving me all the option the best option right task dot completed now we are good with our start thing right you have successfully designed your start part now what where is the stop part right okay now in the stop part so again this is also the task thing so what i will do i will copy this part and paste it here so you know what when the stop is used stop is used when your all all memory of the timer or you know the timer things are about to die or the timer job is already done for a whole application the service is stopped for the timer right so all those operation when you wanted to clean up the timer right all that business logic you can write here now 
since I have already object of timer and there would be multiple object after every five second, right? So when I want, I want that, you know, whenever I stop my service for any reason, I wanted to clean up all the memory, clean up all the resources for timer. So what I need to do, I wanted to stop that timer, right? I want to clean that timer. So I will say timer dot change, huh? And you can say, ah, this should be something called timeout, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh timeout dot infinite right and you can call it zero okay now there are multiple you know uh, multiple uses of timer dot change so you can use timer dot change to modify the sequence of time right and or if you wanted to stop the timer you wanted to clean up something for the timer you use timeout dot infinite for the change and whenever you know the service is stopped it will completely change it will completely stop the timer for that purpose, this timer.change we are going to we are using in stop uh, sync method, right? So I see cancellation token as well. So there is already a detailed video. I have already talked about the cancellation token. So if you are interested, you can go and watch that, and it will give you a clear picture why you have to use the cancellation token. Okay, now we are done with the start design. We have already designed the stop, right? Now, since let's you know, let's also talk about one more thing. We are not going to implement the do work here, that cron job thing. Before that, let's talk about a memory cleanup. Since we are cleaning up the timer thing, what do we have to do? Let's implement one more interface. Ah, uh, let's implement over here. Let's say comma and implement more interface. Ah, uh, that should be i disposable. You all are already aware, right? It's a very common thing that every programmer used to manage the memory. Okay, let's implement. Here you go. So this is giving you dispose method and again we will use this timer thing here let's say timer dot dispose right so whenever we wanted to you know destruct the memory this timer will get disposed right okay now let's talk about the business logic so do work started you know what before that let's see if it is working or not huh do work right and then let's say if it works or not so let's execute and you know when it is working fine this simple business logic then we will go and implement the scheduler right for all the weekdays that i have already shown you okay so since it is started i have the breakpoint right and let's see if it works okay uh, i hope there is no exception okay it has executed the timer oh, i don't have the breakpoint oh so you know what ah uh, this has executed the first cron job not our cron job so one step that we missed here while implementing our cron job this is just a class it is not doing right now anything because there is no object of this service right there is zero reference so what do we have to do the important thing we have to register our service so we have registered our service through builder.service and add hosted service, right? So we are going to use I hosted class here, right? So we have to make it as add hosted service. Okay, so what I will do here, uh, you know what? Builder.service, add hosted service. So I don't need first cron job service. So what I will do, let's implement our second cron job service over here. Now let's see if it works or not. Okay, this time let's wait for a couple of seconds only and let's see if it works okay i have the breakpoint okay uh, uh, uh. it has initialized the timer okay oh i have here right so state should be null because i'm passing null here so i don't need to worry about okay work started do work started right see so after every five seconds it will keep calling okay and it is working right okay now so let me stop it so okay you know what interesting thing now why this stop didn't fire because there is no breakpoint however let me give you one more try if you start it right and let's see because initially i said i don't need a breakpoint here i don't need a breakpoint here because i know it will keep calling it will be very hard to debug after every five seconds either i increase the time okay now if i stop the service as i said initially it should fire right i wanted to make some cleanup so let me just start it and then let's stop it as per the theory i should have something my next breakpoint here when i hit the stop button who so nothing happens 
and you know i was looking at the stack overflow the google i saw lot of discussions about why you know my stop async is not getting fired even i'm stopping the service so you need to be very clear you know when you do visual studio stop that is killing the process forcefully it's not the service stop so you will never get your breakpoint here if you really wanted to see this you know stop async that will work only when you deploy it and you stop your service you can you know implement some logs here that you know and you can print down that the stop async has been called right you can console dot write line or you can you know locker dot log logger dot info something like that and that will give you the picture but if you try to debug it through you know uh, this this thing you will not be able to make a call to now question is you know then how we will make sure our business logic is working fine so you can call this method forcefully somewhere on this test your stop async method logic and then you know just deploy that however you don't need to worry about there is no you should not put any other logic other than cleanup right and this is the standard practice how you keep cleaning your timer when you're implementing i hosted service for background job for a chrome now i said we are not going to implement that star star thing right then how to implement that part that you know if it is on a monday at this time run this if it is on tuesday at this time then run this right so let's go back to the other class that i have already implemented that will save your time and my time both of our time and let's copy the logic from here that we have already written okay so let's copy that uh go there do work right paste it here and here you go so we are checking here conditions so you see if day of week is monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday in any of time right then go and perform your business logic now there would be separate you know sequence of classes then that you will that you will call here right so that is how you can implement your first cron job without pay a single amount of money all these things you can put in somewhere in app setting dot json file somewhere in the config dot in somewhere in the configuration file so whenever you wanted to make a change you don't need to deploy the code it should be in your configuration file right and you don't have to pay extra the next thing is you know when this whole your design part is done so you are actually done so that's it so the the skeleton is ready you have already called it there is a start thing there is you know two it's okay so what you have done you have created one class you have implemented this i hosted service interface there is a start there is a stop and then you have to initialize the timer in in the initialize timer you have to pop, uh, pass the callback and callback will be do work you will implement your cron job logic right on the basis of day and time and then uh pass due time and period time right and then the stop do the memory cleanup and then implement another i disposable uh, implement interface and then do the cleanup all right and all your business logic would be here so these are the easiest steps next step just this is api application go and deploy this application and wherever you have deployed this it will start auto work it will automatically start working i hope you really enjoyed this video if you do please don't forget to subscribe my channel because that actually motivates me that you know i'm helping my community and that boost me to create more topics more videos that's all for today video i will see you in the next video